Lines, Transversals, and Angles, Lesson 5.1, Part A. Standard is 8G5. The objective is to identify relationships of angles formed by two parallel lines cut by a transversal. The essential question is how can algebraic concepts be applied to geometry? Types of angles. The first one is a supplementary angle. These are angles that are part of a straight line and they add up to 180 degrees. The next one is complementary angles. They are angles that are a part of a right angle and they add up to 90 degrees. Adjacent angles. These are angles that share a side. They're angles next to each other. So angle number one and angle number two are adjacent. Angle number two and angle number three are adjacent. Angle number three and angle number four are adjacent. And angle number four and angle number one are adjacent because they are next to each other. Vertical angles. These are angles that are formed by two straight lines and are across from each other. They are also congruent or equal. So I know that angle X is congruent to angle X because they are across from each other. And angle Y is congruent to angle Y because they are across from each other. I also notice that angle X and angle Y form a straight line. That means they are supplementary. So I can say that angle X plus angle Y equals 180 degrees. In geometry, there are some symbols that you need to be aware of. When you see this 90 degree angle with the box, that means perpendicular. The symbol for perpendicular is this upside down T. Now when you see lines that are parallel, they'll often be noted with these double arrows. And the symbol for parallel lines are these double bars. Corresponding angles, they're in the same place but different intersection. They're also congruent. So that means that angle B corresponds to angle F because they're both in the top right hand section. Angle A corresponds to angle E because they're both in the top left hand section. Angle D corresponds to angle H because they're both in the bottom right hand section. And angle C is congruent to angle G because they're both in the bottom left hand section. So that means that angle B is congruent to angle F. Angle A is congruent to angle E. Angle D is congruent to angle H. And angle C is congruent to angle G. Interior angles. These are all the angles inside the parallel lines. So I have my two parallel lines. The angles inside are C, D, E, and F. These are not congruent. So I have angle C, D, E, and F. And they are not congruent. Exterior angles. These are all the angles outside the parallel lines. So when you think of the word exterior, think of the word outside. These angles are outside the parallel lines. So that would be A, B, G, and H. And again, these angles are not congruent. So I have angle A, B, G, and H. And they are not congruent. Alternate interior angles. These are angles that are inside the parallel lines, but opposite side of the transversal. They are also congruent. Now the transversal is a line that cuts the parallel lines. I will label it T. Now inside of the parallel lines, I have angle C. Its alternate interior is angle F. Now I have angle D and its alternate interior is angle E. Now again these angles are congruent so I have angle C and that is congruent to angle F. And then I have angle D and that is congruent to angle E. Alternate exterior angles. 
These are angles that are outside the parallel lines and on opposite sides of the transversal. They are also congruent. So again, I'm going to go ahead and label the transversal as T. Now I'm going to highlight angle A. Its alternate exterior would be angle H because they're on opposite sides. Now B. Its alternate exterior would be angle G because again they are on opposite sides. So angle A is congruent to angle H and angle B is congruent to angle G.